My name is Matt, I'm the co-founder of Hold. And today, I'm gonna to talk about smartphones and cigarettes. Because are smartphones the new cigarettes? And to actually find this out, we need to know how smartphones have an effect on us. I want to start out by testing you. So you need to pay attention, because I want you to read this text from start to end. It's quite hard, right? Snapchat, Facebook, mails, they're all coming in. And do you know how many times you touch your phone per day? Because we got some stats here saying how many times you check your phone, which our stats say is a lot higher, but you check your phone 2,617 times per day. But the next generation is expected to do 5,400 times a day. Why is that? Why is it so hard to focus on a small task? Why is it so easy to get lost in three hours of Candy Crush? Because we are at war over attention. And tech companies are fighting to get you to use as much time as possible on their platforms, make you scroll, make you click. And it's quite hard for us because we have companies like Netflix. They're not competing with Amazon, HBO. They're competing with sleep. And how can we actually turn this around? How can we fight this? Because this is affecting us in multiple ways. Just take our attention span. In 2000, according to Microsoft, our attention span was 12 seconds. Today, it's eight seconds. And a goldfish has a nine second attention span. But that's not the only thing, because our phones are also kind of affecting us on our mental well-being and our kind of int our way to build personal connection. If you take a look at this graph showing how people actually felt less left out, less by themselves, up until 2007. What happened in 2007? iPhone was released. We had smartphones from the early, early 2000s, but suddenly we have a tool that made sure that every information around the world you have in the palm of your hand. And you see how now this is increasing to nearly 40% are feeling left out or lonely. But what's, what does this have to do with, with cigarettes? Like, what's the connection here? Because cigarettes, like smartphones, has a huge popularity increase. You saw that we, before, like we see that in 1963, we were smoking 11 cigarettes a day. That's quite a lot, uh, but the thing is here, it was cool. Smoking was awesome. That's the thing. Like, you were smoking at work, you were smoking at flights, you were even smoking in front of the kids at restaurants. Someone actually told people if you were pregnant, you need to smoke. That's the thing. You have to do it. It's a culture shift. And what's kind of interesting here is you were smoking if you were celebrating a new deal, or if you were bored. Is that quite similar to smartphones today? You're actually using your phones at restaurants, in front of the kids, with the ones you care the most about. You do it when you have something that you want to talk about and share about. You go on Instagram, publish the great things that you achieved, brag about it. And you do it when you're bored, and you're suddenly lost in three hours into Candy Crush or on Instagram. And this is kind of how we see the increase in smartphones. That, but it's a trend that we might have seen before. It's quite similar to the trend we see on the smoking, smoking adaption here. But what happened? Why was 1963 the year that smoking suddenly turned? Why was that at the top of the, top of the iceberg? This is because the government suddenly understand that we need to do something. We have all, all the evidence proving that smoking was bad. But this was the first time they came in and said that this put up warning signs, you ban smoking at flights, at restaurants, and they put up taxes. And then you saw a spiral of people smoking less and less. That's the question, or the question is, will the same thing happen to smartphones? Will the government come in, ban them, 
Maybe. Like in France, they actually already start doing it. They ban smartphones in schools. And my take is that this will not happen uh, because smoking, that's bad, period. But with the smartphone, you have an incredible tool in your hands. We just need some guidance and understand how we can get the best out of it. And that's why we started Hold. We want to help you focus on things that matters. Because we started Hold when we were students. We were sitting together in a tiny, tiny room, trying to get good grades and finally get the job at the end. But it's quite hard when you get that phone buzzing all the time. So what we did, we started out to give ourselves a coffee to the one that didn't check their phones. And that small little thing of competing with your friends and actually getting a real price at the end worked. And that was the start of Hold, an app that actually incentivizes you to focus. So basically, the time of your phone equal points, either alone or with your friends. Those points you exchange for free products like uh, popcorn, a discount from Just Eat, or you can win a travel around the world. But the important thing here is that you also compete with your friends. We use the same mechanics as social media, games, are kind of using to make sure that you're hooked. We use that to make sure that you use it in the right way. And it's working quite well. 50% of the students in Norway are active hold users. And Norway is actually the first country in the world that's managed to break the upwarding trend of phone addiction. And we have 300,000 users here. But what we're most proud of is that they spend an average four and a half hours each day on hold during daytime. Because we increase their productivity, mental well-being, and give them exclusive prices at the end. And that's where our brands come into play. Because we suddenly create a platform where brands are the ones that make sure that you change the behavior. So suddenly, instead of having the pushy form of advertising, we create an engaging way where brands can interact, where we see much higher engagement. And it's not only about studying, it's about different contexts and what's important for you. For example, here we do a campaign now with the Department of Transportation where actually we don't want people to check their phones while they're, while they're driving a car. So we just actually give them points for not using the phone while driving. That's that simple. But at the end, you can win a car or you can get the free coffee at Shell. But that small, such a small thing is actually how we are able to change their current behavior. So that's how we want to help people focus on the things that really matters. So kind of to end up, if smartphones are the new, new cigarettes. I don't believe that so if we have tools like Hold or we actually manage to take back control of our attention. Thank you very much.